So I've been wanting to do a few videos on my cover crops. Um, and I figure today's a good day while I'm seeding. A lot of people have asked me questions, family members, friends, um, people that know that we do cover crops and they wonder about them. I thought I would try to show kind of what we do, how we seed them, why we do them, and maybe make a few more videos in the same field of the seed corn um, from now until next spring and during planting of next year. So um, right now we're in a seed corn field, which is obviously pretty short. Um, usually seed corn is quite a bit shorter than regular corn that gets made into animal feed. This is corn for next year seed that will be harvested and then used for animal feed, ethanol, um, all kinds of good stuff like that. So anyhow, this is the machine that we use to seed most of our cover crops. It is a sprayer that is converted to a seeder. So where that tank is right there, um, usually there's a liquid tank for the spray that goes through these booms and through nozzles and then onto the crop. Um, it, a guy in Ohio uh, put this seeder on for me and this is a, the tank uh, is right here that this cover crop goes into and the machine's running so I won't go underneath there but there's a big fan, that big black thing, where am I at right here? Uh, right there. That black thing um, blows air through the tubes under the tank and there's little rollers that go, um, that turn, that let the seed out. Anyhow, it gets blown through these tubes. These big tubes right here, the seed gets blown through there by air. goes out to them things down these tubes and then air comes out of here probably at like 70 to 90 miles an hour I think is what it is so it's pretty fast and it blows the seed and it hits this little pan and you can see it's kind of um, shaped on an angle and it hits that little pan and then blows the seed. You can see, not sure how good you can see, but there's a, there's a rye seed right there. There's a sorghum seed. There's more rye. Um, there's also oats. So right here are some oats. Right here are collards, which I put them in for grazing. I'm gonna be grazing some cattle out here um, and there's also turnips rye and um, turnips rye collards sorghum sedan grass oats and radishes that the turnips and the collards are mostly for grazing there's some uh, soil benefits from them but mostly for grazing so um, yeah and I'll make some videos of the cattle out here while they're grazing maybe this winter and kind of show you how it grows. But it's the end of July right now. So the advantage of doing this versus waiting until the crop comes off is that we can um, seed a lot like the sorghum, the radishes, um, the oats would do some, but a lot of them crops die with a frost. So as soon as it frosts, they die. And like radishes, um, we're putting them to make a big deep tap root that break up compaction so if you put them on later after harvest they don't get as big um, as they will now now they will get about as probably about as big as my well that's maybe extreme but they'll get close to as big as my forearm so um, yeah and they'll put a deep deep root down um, sorghum puts a lot of biomass uh, it, produces a lot of material on top of the ground so the cows will like that um, yeah so turnips are good for grazing collards are good for grazing 
the oats are also good for grazing and good for soil health and the rye then we will let grow in the spring the rye will be the only thing that will grow through the whole year and won't die it will stay um, living and then in the springtime it'll really take off and then we'll plant our soybeans into that um, and then that will lay down and we bought a crimper now that will be able to roll our cover crops down which will kill the rye at a certain stage it'll kill it um, and that way we can plant and then roll the cover crop and hopefully eventually be able to go without herbicide so um, that's what we're working towards so this is kind of how it looks in the row that's how them things go through the corn so kind of see it it's 80 feet wide so it takes two planter passes it's like 32 rows wide is how wide it is so it goes pretty quick and yeah so I'll give you a video of it up in the cab and then that way you can see that Back in the cedar now, um, going down the corn row. This is my GPS monitor that tells me where to go and uh, changes my rates, how much I'm putting on, and all that. That's the scales. And this is the view from up in the cab. So. learning a lot we're learning a lot me and my brother and dad all are learning a lot and a lot of people have helped us and uh, so yeah it's, it's a lot of fun it's it kind of makes farming like starting all over again everything you knew you kind of got to figure it out again and um, so yeah it's it's just really cool and it's see, cool to see the benefits uh, from the soil and seeing more earthworms uh, less erosion, um, hopefully less fertilizer in the future. Um, we haven't gotten to that point yet, but um, just, yeah, farming a little more without inputs um, and a little more natural, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, if you're curious or want to know more, just ask away and I'll, I have a lot of people that ask me and it's kind of hard to explain in a five minute conversation how it all works. So I'll try to make more videos maybe this summer as it grows and um, this fall when we harvest, how it looks, and then next spring when we plant, uh, when the cattle are grazing, all that. So uh, yeah, hopefully the videos make a little bit of sense. I'm not very good at it, but it is what it is, so. people ask me about cover crops is so does that mean that you're gonna make a lot more money or does that mean you're gonna have crops that yield a lot more um, and yes and no the, the way that we see it is um, your poorer fields will get better and you're, you're building it's kind of like a retirement fund that you put money into you know, when I'm 30 uh, and I'm, I'm planning on using that retirement when I am 65 or 70. So um, hopefully we, it won't be that long until we see results, but it's not like you just plant a cover crop and you're going to raise, you know, twice the bushels because um, you have a cover crop. So that's one thing. And then another is um, why don't why don't everybody use cover crops? Um, and like, are farmers that don't use cover crops bad? And it's, they're not bad, they're not bad farmers. There's a ton of successful farmers that don't use a bit of cover crops. Some of them have tried them um, and they didn't 
like the way they work. They didn't. They didn't want to do it that way, and that doesn't mean they're, a, you know, a bad farmer at all. Um, and honestly, a lot of some of our fields this year don't look very good because of some of the things that we did with cover crops that we're learning. So um, it's all a learning process. Um, some of our fields I'm embarrassed about, and some I'm excited about. So it's it's really nerve wracking, especially with me because I I'm pretty. Uh, I'm pretty antsy a lot of times about stuff like this and when our fields don't look very good it's pretty embarrassing but um, it's just the way that we're going to do it and it's it, we're determined to figure it out and so and we've seen a lot of good from it that's for sure so um, just because you plant a cover crop doesn't mean that everything is sunshine and rainbows and unicorns because it's not so I just want to clear that up because a lot of people have asked me about some of them things so um, and yeah, I just wanted to show you guys, I guess, kind of what we're doing. If you have any questions, just go ahead and, and ask them um, when you see me or on the video or whatever you feel like. But yeah, so we're just, uh, we got reloaded with some more seed. Um, and we're just about done with this field. And then this is the last of the grazing fields that we have to do right now. The rest of them are just cover crops for strictly soil health. Our, our bull calves um, will be grazing out here this winter um, and they will um, they'll have the turnips, the collards, the rye, all the cover crop that we have plus the corn residue um, and leftover corn that doesn't get harvested by the picker. So um, that way we won't have to harvest any feed, we won't have to bale hay, I mean we still bale hay but we won't have to bale as much for the animals. Um, just seeding this helps the soil. When they poop, they poop out here. I don't have to scoop up the manure. Um, it, it's just a lot less uh, time, energy, money. Um, cattle seem to be healthier. And I'll, I'll make some videos on the cattle while they're out here grazing. And, them out too. So.